are no good data on what the prevalence is, but I believe it's actually a fairly common problem. I'm seeing a, a, a substantial number of patients with this problem post-gastric bypass at the University of Minnesota, and I hear about it from other physicians who are seeing it, want to know what to do about it, and at this very meeting, just asking for a show of hands in the audience as to the number of people who have seen and dealt with this, it seemed half the audience has encountered such patients. It makes me think the prevalence is w much higher than we have previously thought. Actually, it's less common in people with type 2 diabetes. Uh, maybe doesn't happen much in them at all because they have insulin deficiency and are not able to produce hyperinsulinemia. It happens, I think, much more often in people who have not had diabetes, who have healthy uh, insulin-producing beta cells and can produce a very robust response to postprandial hypoglycemia when it occurs. I think there's two hypotheses as to the mechanism. The one to which I subscribe is that you have a rapid entry of uh, ingested carbohydrates into the intestinal tract and thereby rapid uh, absorption. So carbohydrates go from mouth to intestinal tract, boom, in minutes. And then you get uh, hyperglycemia and healthy insulin producing islet cells pound the, hypoglyce the hyperglycemia with lots of insulin. Uh, you then get overshoot where the hyperglycemia is overcorrected and you have transient hypoglycemia. The other hypothesis is that uh, with gastric bypass and changes in GLP-1 in particular, rise in GLP-1, you get hyperplasia of the insulin producing beta cells and that's what produces the hyperinsulinemia. And which is correct, I think, is not known.